All right, so welcome to the ultimate beginner guide of how to start your FPV journey. So in this video, we're basically going to talk about the size and types of FPV drones that you will probably encounter in your FPV journey. So each of them, each of these drones on the table is built for a different purpose and you might want to get them in different scenarios. So we're going to look at them one by one. And I hope at the end of this video, you probably know which one you wanted to start with. All right, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so before we begin, there is something important I want you to know is size of the FPV quads are often determined by the size of the propeller. So when we are mentioning a 5 inch quad, the 5 inch will also refer to the diameter of the propeller. It's not about the drone's 5 inch, it's about the, the propeller is 5 inch. And when you have a 5 inch propeller, your drone is basically built at that size. Okay, the range of prop size that FPV pilots generally use are going to be from 2 inch to seven inch, okay? So two inch to seven inch, and sometimes it may be even larger to 10 inch, like the Helion from iFlight. The bigger the props, the larger your frame and motors would need to be in order to harness the additional weight and power. The exception are smaller 1S whoops. In general, when you come to, when it comes to this kind of size, like those kind of like palm size drones, we generally do not talk about this drone size by the propeller anymore, but we talk about the wheelbase, okay? So the wheelbase, generally you, you will often see 65 millimeter, 75 millimeter, or 85 millimeter. That's generally talking about the wheelbase. So for now, let's just understand the size of propeller are the distinguished factor for the size of the drone. Next, let's talk about the classes of FPV drone. In general, there is go the shape of the frame of an FPV drone would dictate the purpose of the drone. They are mostly categorized into five classes. Let's just name it classes and it's going to be easier. So there is going to be tiny whoop. This is going to be a tiny whoop. The second one, cine whoop. You basically have a rock art. Freestyle, this is going to be freestyle. Racing, obviously this is a smaller build because I don't do racing. The true race drones are going to be bigger, but you may see like a really, really X shaped drone that generally it's going to be a race drone. And the last one is going to be the biggest one. Generally, it's going to be the long range drones that you wanted to build. Okay, so long range drones is going to be the last one. Generally, it also might be the biggest one that you will have. All right, let's look at them one by one. All right, so the first on the list is going to be a tiny whoop. So the tiny whoop can be in any shape and in any frame, and it can even don't have, a, have to have a frame. You can still probably call it a tiny whoop, but Generally, when we are mentioning tiny whoops, we generally re are referring to the ones that has a little prop guard and is really small. So basically, this is my distinction. I will say that if you can have a tiny whoop as long, it is within the 65, 70, 85 millimeter category. When it's smaller than that, generally, I think it's considered as a tiny whoop. So the battery you use on these are generally going to be 1S LiPos and up to 2S LiPos. So small is going to be the key. So you can see that 1S LiPo is like this small. And if you wanted the 6S, it's going to be this big. Okay. So this is going to be small for you to practice indoors. As for the tiny whoop, I will say this is the most beginner friendly class as they are less powerful and they are very durable in a sense. You can use this category to race, you can freestyle, whatever you like. Most of the beginner kits are available on the market will be in this category. They will often come with prop guards to take so for you to take on more damage to or and to prevent hurting people. So when you're a prop guard, when you bump into people, generally people don't get hurt. And obviously, even you, even the proper spinning, you put your fingers in it, it's not going to cut you because the motors are not strong enough. So this is the safest one. And I would suggest you, if you really wanted to start, I would say Tiny Whoop is always a good option. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, so the second class we will be looking at is going to be the cine whoops. So cine whoops often comes in as a two inch to 3.5 inch propeller size. So this one particular one is going to be a 2.5 inch cine whoop. And if you wanted to have a comparison, this is going to be a two inch cine whoop. So basically, if you also wanted to consider this as a tiny whoop, you can because this is actually 85 millimeter wheelbase. So it's kind of like not like a hard set distinction, but more for a purpose are you trying to use it for so when you see an fpv quad with these rounded prop guards high chance is going to be a cine whoop so the purpose of cine whoop and another distinction between this and a tiny whoop 
is for you to fly steady and retrieve good and smooth cinematic shots. So you want good footage out from it. Your purpose is not going to be flying just for fun, but a little bit more for cinematic. That's why you get the name. So the prop guards are added for safety purpose. So you can fly indoors closer to objects or even to people so people don't get hurt. However, the downsides of the prop guards is this will be the limitation of ability to do freestyle flying. You will still be able to do a flip flop, but you're just not going to get the full flying potential all of it because the prop guards reduces the performance. So something you have to consider, but most of the indoor commercial shots are going to be taken in this class. I don't think people are, are actually going to fly like open props into like indoor or close to people, because if you do that, you're going to cut people real bad. All right. Done with this one, let's look at the next one. So the next one we're going to be looking at is going to be the freestyle. So the freestyle is the one to go if the purpose is to do acrobatic flying. So acrobatic flying is those flips, rolling, jumping through hoops and tricks, split ass, whatever, power loop. This class of drone typically will have a prop size from 2 inch to 5 inch. So, however, in my opinion, the size of the drone does not matter that much. You can have a really small one and also call it a freestyle drone. So in my opinion, the size of drone does not matter that much. The more important aspect should be the power and the durability of the drone as you need more power to gain better performance to freestyle around and you need a stronger body to take more damage as this is going to be the type you're going to crash your drone at the most because when you're jumping through hoops, you're going to crash into hoops one day and you want your drone to be strong enough to be able to sustain. So also I, I see that most of the Freestyle drones are going to be designed kind of like in this kind of form factor, okay? The shape of the frame is often going to be like a X shape, like this. You can see that it's an X and this is why I named my YouTube account iFly X-Wing because this is an X-Wing. <laughs> I know it's a terrible pun, but yeah, I just wanted to name it like that. Anyway, so the another one is going to be the one who is called Dead Cat. So this is not the perfect example, but you can see that this is not a true X, right? You can see that it kind of goes like that. It kind of looks like a dead cat laying down. And the good parts of this is you generally will not see the propellers in your frame. But this one, this one probably still won't. But generally, most of the, if you're flying an X frame, generally you are going to see props in your camera view. The freestyle class is also a class that is going to be wearing many hats as you can fit in many scenarios. You can use this to do cine a cinematic fly as long as it's outdoor. You can do a lot of tricks. You can chase cars. You can do a lot of things with this kind of frame. So if you're starting your FPV journey, I think you at least need to have one of this. Okay, done with this one. Jump to the next one. All right, so the next class we're going to be talking to is going to be racing drones. So as based on the name, racing drones are built especially for racing purpose. So they often have a toothpick style frame like that. So basically what it does is you kind of get additional uh, clearance out so you can run bigger props on them. So I'm running a three, I think this is a two inch prop. I think I can even put a three inch on it without hitting the thing. So when you have bigger props, bigger motors, you generally have bigger wings and you can fly a little bit faster. So as for the frame, I believe if you actually wanted to participate in the race drone, that kind of activity, I think there is a standardized side, like standardized frame that you have to use. I'm not an expert, so I couldn't tell you more, but generally this is going to be how most likely it's going to look like. So basically we're done with this one. Let's jump to the next one. All right, next let's talk about long range drones. So long range drones are built for long range cruising purpose, obviously for long range. And they typically will have a deck cast style frame and a bigger mass, like a bigger body, because when you're flying for far, when you're flying very far, you probably want a bigger mass to take on wind and potential like stuff. So bigger, the better in this sense, I would say. Obviously you can have a small one, but when you have a bigger drone, I would say probably safer if you wanted to dive mountains. And this is also a class that when you see the mountain dives or whatever, it's generally done with this one. Okay. So, and also it generally has like a dead cast style flame. This is a long range drone, but this one is not that obvious. But so let me show you a different one I built. So you can see that it actually has a dead cast style frame. Like it is completely almost like level. So you don't have props in your like FPV camera. So another important aspect of low range drone is you always want a GPS on it because when you, when you are lost, you wanted to flip a switch and 
hope that the drone is going to fly back itself and to achieve that you are going to require a gps you probably will say hey can you do freestyle probably i would suggest you not to because to achieve long range although it's big but you can see that considered to like a thicker arm like this one this one is not a good example but if you look at another build i did for using the hglrc frame you can see that the frame is not as thick consider that this one this is not going to take a lot of damage unfortunately if you're trying to do this is something that you don't want it to freestyle with i wouldn't say all right and additionally to achieve the low range ability we often use lion batteries instead of lipo batteries and this is a reason why it may not be a good fit for freestyle flying as for the reason because like lion packs they generally do not have a really high c rating which you are going to run into trouble if you are doing it so another good part of lion packs is basically this is a self-built lion pack by somebody but you can this i think this is probably 5000 or 6000 mini amps but you can see that if you get a 6s this is a 6s lion pack but if you get like a 6s like lipo pack it is a lot bigger this is only 1400 but this is kind of like a lot more capacity than this one much lighter so if you want to fly long range and you do not need a lot of punch-up powers this is the one you probably wanted to use as for the reason we're going to talk a little bit more and explain in the battery session otherwise it's going to take the whole video to explain the batteries all right so that's about it for all the classes and which one should you pick well this is up to you but my suggestion is to still start with tiny oops as the beginners you will need something to practice anywhere on a daily basis unless you live in a farm or something that you have a big space then probably getting a five inch will make sense but when you have a tiny hoop you can fly indoor you can fly outdoor you can practice any day you want and when you build more confidence that's when you start investing to a different size sizes of fpv drones so first step i will say start with the tiny hoop and if you wanted to venture into freestyle i will start i will say probably start with a instead of a five inch start with a smaller freestyle drone like a three inch or a 3.5 inch like this one so yeah these are going to be easier to control in five inch yeah less chance to hurt people with this one that's it about this video and if you have additional questions or just wanted to leave a comment if you're still confused leave it down below and i will see you in the next video bye for now